just few words about uh, GCIO, and then um, I'll ask uh, uh, really just to play a short video. So the GCIO, the Global Council for Innovation Organization, is, is a network of organization that drives innovation leadership in cities uh, and organization companies around the world. Uh, it was co-founded by the Dubai Government Excellence Program and the Global Innovation Management Institute. And the mission of the GCIO is really to share and exchange innovation best practices uh, around the world and um, the, implement, the way that innovation is, uh, is implemented. So really advance innovation uh, around the world. Uh, let me just ask to play a short video that uh, presents uh, the, uh, the organization and we'll turn to our speaker shortly. المجلس العالي للمؤسسات المبتكرة مجلس فريد من نوعه يمثل مؤسسات عالمية من مختلف قارات العالم هذه المؤسسات مختصة بالابتكار وبدعم الابتكار وبتعزيز ثقافة الابتكار في المؤسسات وفي الجهات الموجودة في مختلف هذه الدول المجلس بيكون لدور كبير في دعم تبادل ونقل المعرفة ونقل الابتكارات الموجودة في مختلف قارات العالم مختلف المؤسسات الموجودة على مستوى العالم ودعمها وتأثيرها ونقلها للمؤسسات الموجودة سواء في دبي وفي دولة الإمارات أو على مستوى الدول المشاركة في هذا المجلس برنامج دبي للتمييز الحكومي يعتبر أحد الأعضاء المؤسسين لهذا المجلس والبرنامج كان لدور وباع كبير في دعم الابتكار والمبتكرين على مدى العشرين سنة الماضية من خلال المبادرات اللي يقدمها من خلال الفئات الموجودة في جائزة برنامج دبي للتمييز الحكومي البرنامج اللي دور كبير في هذه المبادرة وسيدعم الابتكار والمبتكرين وثقافة الابتكار على مستوى المستوى المحلي وعلى المستوى العالمي وسيساهم في نشر كل الإنجازات وكل الابتكارات الموجودة على مستوى دبي للعالم بأسه Thank you, Irina. And again, uh, welcome for those who just joined. Uh, so in today's session, we uh, really have an exciting topic, um, an exciting speaker. Uh, let me introduce our speaker for this month, uh, Hitendra Patel, uh, who will discuss the importance of innovation ecosystem as enabled by AI. So really how you bring AI into innovation and facilitate the creation of an innovation ecosystem. Um, uh, Hitendra and Manuel Gutierrez launched Akayo, uh, which is uh, an innovative AI enabled platform that really harnesses the power of AI to create innovation ecosystem and revolutionize the way that innovation is executed uh, in, in organizations. Um, Hitendra is uh, the co-founder um, and the CEO of the iXL Center, uh, which is a global innovation consultancy based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's, it's a global organization. Uh, he guided several hundred organizations and executive teams in defining innovation strategy, innovation models, in implementing innovation, and achieving innovation results. Um, many innovative um, offering came out of IXL. One of them is the Innovation Olympics, uh, in which uh, teams from five leading universities are competing to address a challenge uh, for either a large corporation client or non-profit uh, organization or local government. Uh, there were several hundred Innovation Olympics already taking place, over 100 companies and over 500 student teams across um, about 100 universities. Uh, in addition, uh, Hitendra is a prolific author. He offered several books on innovation, Connectivate, Health of Eight, and the Upcoming Dots. Uh, prior uh, to the IXL Center, Hitendra was a partner at the Monitor Group and uh, at uh, ADL in both he was among the in the leadership team of the innovation practice uh, and he started career as as an innovator uh, at Motorola he holds uh, six patents 
uh, and also founded several <coughs> venture-backed companies where Akayo is, is one of them. So uh, first of all, welcome Itendra, and we're looking forward uh, to an exciting session. I'll turn it over to you. That's great, thank you. If you'll allow me to share screens. All right, great, thank you. So first, thanks a lot for having me over here uh, on, on this meeting. I think it's a very relevant topic uh, that I want to share with you. And this has been dear to my heart for the last 30, 40 years. So all through my journey of innovation, one of the biggest challenges has always been the fact that how big can I imagine? How big can I think? What kind of big ideas can I do? And what can I actually do? And often the size of my imagination and my willingness to take risk on big ideas was limited by what I knew and what resources I had within me or within my circle of people. And based on that, I would attack big ideas, but they were not that big. So the idea over here was how could you attack the biggest ideas in the world? And how could you actually put the right teams together to be able to solve those problems anytime, anywhere? And for the last 30, 40 years, we knew how to do it, but we couldn't actually activate it because of the fact that we didn't have digital, we didn't have connectivity, and we didn't have AI. And that's the story I'm going to share with you today. Okay. So Akayo comes along to be the first all-in-one AI-powered innovation ecosystem. What is it and why is it important? Well, first and foremost, never forget, growth is the imperative of every organization and every, every company. It's not innovation. Innovation is a how to get growth. Growth is the imperative. Growth is why we do what we do. So driving growth is the agenda of every president of a country, every governor of a state, every mayor of a city, or every any CEO of any corporation. Growth. And then they ask, how do I grow? And often they want to grow through innovation. And innovation has increasingly become difficult in this really rapidly changing and uncertain world. And it is this complexity, growth through innovation, but the world is changing too fast and too quickly. And it's ambiguous and uncertain. So how do we do this quicker, better, faster, and do the big things at the same time? When we also see when organizations, when they try and actually innovate, here's what's really happening. 50%, almost 50%, 52% of all Fortune 500 companies go bankrupt within 20 to 30 years of their existence. Our friend Jeff Bezos, has said me very clearly that today Amazon is an old company. It's already 20 years old. It's at risk of dying. It's become an old company. 20 years is all we have. As human beings, we get 80, 90. 20 years is all we have. And you got to stay fit. you got to stay agile. You've got to be changing and adaptive all the time. Another other point is 74% of companies reacted so slow to AI. When AI came, Many companies still don't have an AI strategy. 74% a year later are still saying, what should we do about that? That's how slow we are in moving to this rapidly changing world. And then again, the other part is most executives feel lonely that this long-term pressure to innovate is there and I don't know how to do it. So there's all kinds of pressure for growth, growth through innovation. And if they don't grow, yes, these companies will die, right? Going further in this analysis, you want to stay ahead of the curve. Technology is changing so fast that we have never imagined before. CRISPR is here where we now know the programming language of biology. We can program cells. We can stop diseases. And this is moving faster than we imagined as computational and biology comes together. We've got robotics coming. Robotics of a type that we never imagined. Before. Robotics for factory workers. Robotics for customer service, robotics for human interactions, robotics for flying planes, aeroplanes, and everything else. We got this LLM technology. Yeah, we call it LLM AI. And this technology is coming in. NVIDIA comes to the world and surprises us as the most valuable company on the planet. How did that happen? Less than two years, another company shows up. Graphene, another technology is coming in material science and batteries. 
in terms of window glass, in terms of electricity connecting to surfaces, holographic images coming, biologics, nanotechnologies, blockchain, green hydrogen. It's not going to stop. The speed at which our knowledge is accelerating, the speed at which we are about to collaborate has increased in, you know, in manners that we never imagined before. And this is the dilemma. How do you stay ahead of this thing? And what are the tools of innovation that will allow us to be able to continue driving growth for your company at the pace required in a world which is ambiguous and uncertain? Right? So innovation remains very simple. You just have to do new things that you haven't done before that creates and captures value. That's the definition. Innovation is a very simple definition. Do something new that you didn't do before and creates and captures new value. Right? Straightforward. And you can do many things, which is called new, to do that. But the challenge for all of this is, within our organizations, the very structures that we put in place that made us successful are now beginning to hold us back. Innovation initiatives tend to be too weak because we don't put enough resources behind it. We stay in silos, the organization structure, marketing is over there, sales is over there, R&D is in another part. We got all this distributed organization and they don't think in silos, oh, collaboration. We try and do everything alone versus trying to do this with other people's resources. And then we don't actually find the right partners. We struggle with all these challenges. If you could solve those, you might be better prepared for this rapidly changing world. So just some examples. Nike, right up front, recognizes it doesn't have enough resources to do everything. It doesn't have enough knowledge of electronics. But it knows the world is going forward. And if you're going to be an athlete, and you're going to wear shoes, and you're going to be fit, you need information and data. Where's the sensors going to come from? Where's the connectivity going to come from? Where's the device you'll show the information on? And they say, we're going to partner with Apple. Apple knows all that stuff. By partnering with Apple, Nike immediately brings in-house a know-how, a know-how to do on technology that it can't do. It knows a lot about sticking things together, rubber soles. It knows how to make a comfortable shoe, but it doesn't know electronics. And by partnering, it's able to do bigger and bolder things than it could do before. Meanwhile, Armor All, Under Armour and others, are not thinking in the same way and they try and build things on their own or they don't even go down that path. The next second, Nike overtakes in this ambiguous and uncertain world through partnering, through partnering with Apple, leaps forward. If you look further, Samsung and LG, great two companies, within the same company, in Samsung and LG, they've got a refrigerator company, a television company, they've got a, a, four, a watch company, they've got a cell phone company. All of them, all the different business units exist in LG and Samsung. But for whatever reason, Samsung is able to get those different business units to talk to each other and collaborate. And as they collaborate with each other, they come up with solutions that you don't have to open the refrigerator door because there's a television screen over there. The screen is connected to the supermarket and it knows your orange juice has run out. And therefore, digital screens, refrigeration, Microwave are all interconnected to create bigger, bolder solutions through collaboration with the different business units. LG doesn't do as good of a job, where they have more silos, the buildings are more separated physically, and they're not interacting as much as they need to. And as a result, Samsung surges fall. You go further, and we see this even with the best companies in the world where they screw it up. Our friend at Microsoft figures it out and says, look, I don't know a lot about AI and immediately goes and says, who should I partner with? Who should I collaborate with? And immediately says, let's do a partnership with ChatGPT and says, let's do this. And immediately embeds it into Copilot when you launch ChatGPT. On the other side, Google says, uh-uh, we're gonna do it ourselves. And they try and do everything on their own. They got smart people to do it. They got money to do it also sometimes, but somehow, their own organization can't go as fast as an organization on the outside. And then when AI comes out, Microsoft says, sits there, Satya, has got a big smile on his face, and I got it all figured out. I got, I got Copilot on my Microsoft. And his stock price jumps up in the billions of dollars. Meanwhile, Google says, oh, 
We missed it. We missed it. We missed it. Can you still hear me, guys? Yeah. Yes. And and as a result of missing it, stock price drops. Satya, uh, 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 the CEO of Google, is almost under threat of getting fired. The board is reassigned. Sergey Brin comes back. This is what did you do, and how do we make sure this thing continues? So then we look at the next another example. This is Procter and Gamble. Procter and Gamble. The CEO on day one says, I don't have enough resources to do everything. And I also believe that if I were to do everything on our own, we'll go too slow. So PNG, Procter and Gamble, right on day one. And I used to work with AG Lefty um, in, 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 in Cincinnati. On his right hand side, he's got a CTO. On the left hand side, he's got a CFO. And then there he is. And he says, Give me your ideas. And when you present an idea to him, whether it's a new battery of the future or a new shampoo of the future, he says, who can we connect and develop? Who can we connect with and develop it faster? Always saying that we don't need to do everything ourselves. We don't need to learn everything ourselves. We need to find people who are smarter than us who can go faster than us. And that ecosystem of networks around there is what makes them go really fast. Meanwhile, other companies do not put that strategically in their heads and say, we'll figure things out on our own. For example, Unilever. And as a result of it, PNG surges forward, going faster, being able to do more different things, better and quicker with less risk. So that's the whole message over here in this very, very ambiguous and uncertain world, which is moving very fast. What's the message? If you want to grow, and you want to grow through innovation. You can do it alone, or you can do it with somebody else. If you do it with others, you might think bigger, you might think bolder, and therefore you can also go faster and cheaper and reduce the risk of doing what you have to do. We need a platform that does that, and that's what Akayo is. Akayo is an AI-enabled platform that connects your ecosystem together and basically helps you form teams based on competences needed to make anything you want. Okay? It looks around for partners in other corporations, in governments, in academia, or private capital, and does the ecosystem mapping. It then does a precision match, saying that I want to make a battery of the future, and in that battery, I need an anode or an electrolyte or a cathode. It's a cathode that I don't know how to make, it searches those cathode experts around the world in uh, startups, in governments, in private corporations, academia, and finds those people and then says, you guys might make a match, a precision match. That match, when it happens, now has to be nudged to AI who says, you guys do like each other. You guys should collaborate together. You should find a win-win model to get together to do make this thing happen. And then through AI nurtures, drives the matchmaking. Akayo is the Tinder for competency matching. If you are looking for certain competencies to make anything in the world, it finds the people and the organizations who have those competencies and says, you guys have made a match. Now go for a date. Now get to know each other and now create a collaborative team that can take and build a battery of the future as fast as you What do you want to do? You want to work and spark on bigger and bolder breakthroughs. You want to reduce the cost and time to do the work that you want to do. You want to mitigate the risk and you want to break down the silos. And that's what this platform is supposed to drive you to do. Okay. Who is interested in sort of platforms? Public entities, corporations. I'm going to give some examples of each and then I'm going to show you the software and then academia and the hubs. Public entities are interested in this, governments. What's my ecosystem of my city? Corporations, where are all my labs? In a company as big as when I used to work at Motorola, we had almost 300 labs across all of our Motorola facilities. We had equipment that was not being used that people would order twice and three times. We had experts on everything, but we couldn't find them. Now you can find them within the corporation also. Academia, universities, same issue, professors doing research everywhere, and innovation hubs. 
accelerators would want us. Okay. So we have potential across many of these different places. And when we look at it, let me just give some examples. Imagine if you are a beauty and skincare company and you want to know what the beauty of future is. I want to know what ingredients I should be using in the future to do anti-aging. I want to know what kind of packaging it should be in. I need to know what kind of precision delivery systems can be used. Those are the competencies we need. And as a result, it searches them out from around the world, whether in Japan or Korea, or whether in a university at MIT, and says, here are some people who can help you do this thing. Matchmaking for your future products based on trends, concepts, and business growth. If you are a company like Airbus, you might be thinking about how do I partner with all my airlines who I work with, all the airports, and figure out about green and sustainability and connect those ecosystems together saying, let's work on a common problem. If you're a university, you might say, I've got all these professors doing research in my library in, in, in different places, MIT, for example. And Elon Musk sends a letter to the, to the rector of the university and says, I want to make the next generation battery for my electric cars. This thing goes out into the university and immediately finds out the professor in mechanical engineering who's working on packaging. It finds a professor who's in chemistry working on electrolytes. It finds a professor in electrical engineering who's working on safety circuits. And says, here are the 10 professors who don't even talk to each other at MIT because they are in different buildings. And all 10 of you collaborating together could create a battery of the future for Elon Musk. And MIT now becomes a vibrant, powerful technology developer of not science and technology only, but of products and services that we can use. We can see this at Eco Patrol, oil and gas companies saying, hey, look, what is green hydrogen? Or look, in, look at it, a smart city in Port Alegre, where they're saying we have an ecosystem of startups and big companies, and they need to talk to each other, suppliers and all that. And finally, of course, we have been working on green hydrogen, where there's a nascent emerging set of players we need to be brought together into a consortium to say how do we work and collaborate with each other. What I wanted to share with you over here, and I'm going to stop presenting right now, is this platform. I would like to do a, maybe a little bit of Q&A for five minutes, maybe Adi. And, and then I would like to show a video of the platform itself. Uh, so first, let me open it uh, to any question and ask Carilla or Victor to help out uh, in, uh, in terms of identifying questions. Uh, yeah, this, before yeah. that, I just would like uh, to kick it off with one question. Um, so you brought a lot of examples from different companies. Uh, as you look to the future and reflect about what will be the basis of competition, the basis of winning uh, in in innovation, how is it going to be different than what we're seeing now, what historically has been? So normally, when we think about innovation, people have been working with their own innovation teams inside the companies, and they've been talking about open innovation for a long time, saying open it up and find the, the universities or find other people to help you. That was mainly being used for idea generation. It was ideas. What people didn't really appreciate as much is the most expensive part of innovation is actually doing projects. And projects requires competencies and labs and things that people can put things together with. And that's the expensive part. So the future of innovation has got a couple of things. One is how do we use open innovation to build project teams which are competent and capable, number one. Number two, how do we throw this net even wider so that you don't just find the people who are available. Like in most companies, when you want to make a project team, you ask your boss, who's available? I, I need two people. And they'll say, oh, Peter and Jane are available. Well, Peter and Jane may not be the right people. And Peter and Jane are available for many bad reasons. So in the same way, now we're going to go be more open to all the partners out there and find more partners to select from who might be better partners for you to do. So the real answer on this thing is, the basis of competition is not me competing with you, Adi. It's not my team competing with your team. It's not my company competing with your company. But And it's not my company and my suppliers competing with your suppliers. It is my ecosystem 
competing with your ecosystem. Well, just a quick follow-up question. So someone may challenge you and ask you, so why can't we, what is change? Why can't we build ecosystem today or why couldn't we build it in the past? Why now? What's, what is changing? So the idea of ecosystem has been around for 50 years. I mean, if you ask my colleague, Ron Jornash, he's been talking about this as the basis of competition. The trouble was how to do it. And it was hard to do because companies and people were not connected, digitally connected. For the first time, every one of us is connected, whether through LinkedIn, whether through social media, whether through some sort of connection through universities, alumni, whatever. So we are all on the grid. That's the first thing that's ever happened before. And just so you guys know, who are not baby boomers or Gen, Gen, Gen Zs or Gen Xs, it was only 25 years ago that the internet came to the world. And it was just in 2006, we had social media called Facebook. And LinkedIn came in 2008. This is a new phenomenon. But now we're connected, number one. Number two was, even though we were connected, there was so much information, we didn't know how to organize it. And now with AI, when we say Adi, Adi alone, we can immediately find out which schools you went to, which companies you worked at, who were your friends, what kind of projects you might have worked at, because we brag about some of it, but others can be found. So now we can cluster this information with everybody else, and then we can use LLM mm -hmm. models, AI engines, to be able to say why Adi alone should partner with Hitendra Patel. And it will say inside here, by the way, Adi, you also have an MBA, and so do I. That might be some degree of trust. Oh, by the way, you guys both worked at the same company many, many years ago. That might build another trust. Oh, by the way, you know that you've been this guy called Peter. And both of you know if you know Peter. So now we can use AI in the same way matchmaking happens in terms of dating or, or marriages. We are using similar sort of tools to encourage the collaboration. You are getting LinkedIn messages right now all the time. They're useless. But how do we get those LinkedIn messages that you'll pay attention to? And it is because of this thing called relational matchmaking advanced by AI. By the way, I love the definition of Akayo as the Tinder of competency uh, matchmaking. Uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good illustration of what, what the real capability is. So um, let me uh, just check if there's any other questions coming from, uh, from the group. Uh, before we turn to uh, the demonstration of the platform. I don't see anything on the chat right now. So let me suggest, let's go uh, to to the demonstration of the platform and then we'll, we'll cycle back uh, with any additional questions or comments. Great, thank you, Adi. Um, let, let's put the video on, if you don't mind. I don't know who's got the link, Victor, thank you. Online platform that leverages the power of AI to transform how organizations approach innovation. The Akayo platform is comprised of seven key features your company page, hidden trends, innovation opportunities, matchmaking partners, campaigns, ecosystem radar, and the wall. On top of that, there's the ability to navigate through search, notifications, email, and your own personal profile and settings. Today, we're gonna to look at the features in development for our November 15th MVP. The first is gonna be your company page, which is a snapshot of your company and its resources and its users inside the Akayo platform, followed by hidden trends, which shows you the world of possibilities and innovation. Then there's innovation opportunities, which are the fields of play that you're choosing to look at in order to determine what products and services you wanna create. And matchmaking partners is our tool to be able to connect you with other companies, universities, startups, the people inside those places to be able to make this innovative product or service, what we call in the system an offering, come to life. So imagine right now I am a user that is an innovation manager in a company that has an account inside the Akaio platform. I'm logging in and I'm seeing right away my company detail page here. This page has all the information about my company in the Akaio platform that's been inputted upon onboarding onto the platform. And so myself and everybody from my company that's in the Akaio platform sees this, and this gives us a benchmark as to who we are and what we're looking to do in innovation, allowing all of us to interactively build this profile so that it represents a good snapshot of what our company is looking to do in innovation. 
Upon logging in, I'm going to see a tutorial pop up if it's my first time. And this is going to allow me to be able to go through and see at any given time any module so that I can learn how everything works in the system. Now I'm going to tab over to Hidden Trends which is the big picture and the starting point of my user journey as I go into the process of researching and discovering exactly how I want to innovate with my company. Hidden Trends is displayed in three rows. Emerging Trends, which is the newest and most fresh trends that are relatively unknown in the market. Industry-specific trends based on your company profile. And Macro Trends, which cover the trends that are happening broadly all over the world. I'm gonna go ahead and select several of these trends and that's gonna generate my innovation opportunities, which are my fields of play within these trends that my company will be able to innovate in. I click on the Discover Opportunity Areas button and I'm gonna to go to Innovation Opportunities and see this list of opportunity areas that I can expand and collapse into. And when I expand, I get to see a detailed view of this opportunity area. What trends is it associated to? What is the offering mix? What are the products and services in this field of play that I can potentially build? And below that we see competencies, which are all the skills that it would take to make all the offerings inside of this opportunity area. I'm going to select one of the offerings. I'm going to see an offering detail view that's going to give me key aspects of what it would take to make this offering. What's the potential customers and business models? And as I scroll down, again, I see this competency view, which gives me a breakdown of what it would take to build this offering, this product or service. What would be the aspects, the competencies that my company is in a position to make, which is to do internally, to collaborate with others like universities, other startups, other companies, to outsource entirely, which we call buy, or what are things that are in the future that are coming that I just need to pay attention to in order to make this new innovative offering happen, which we're calling scouting. You can see on the left, we have a competency map and that breaks all the competencies down to build this product and where my company is positioned. I now exit out of this detail view and I'm gonna like a couple of offerings that I wanna consider pursuing further. So now that we've done the research and we've established, hey, these are the offerings that we want to do and we can understand how well our company is positioned to do it, we're going to get into the matchmaking partners module, which is designed to be able to plug in the gaps and to look at the world and see who is best positioned out there to collaborate with my company. From this view, we can see two options. We can either search based on the various products that we have and offerings that we've liked, or we can go into a straight competency lookup and look for a particular skill set that our company is missing that we want to go find companies universities and startups to partner with. So here I've done a search for machine learning and I'm seeing people inside of companies, universities and startups that I can connect with that have a specialty in machine learning. There's a robust filtering system to hone in on the people that I need. I can expand upon the results I'm seeing so I can see more people and what startups and universities and companies are associated with. I can hover over and see details around how strong the search results are around being able to actually execute on the competency. What experience do they have? And are they the right fit? I'm gonna select several people and then I'm gonna hit the contact CTA button at the bottom that's gonna generate an email through AI for each individual person that I've selected that contextually tells them why I'm getting in touch with them, invites them into the Akio platform and brings them into the system in a way that says, hey, you're valuable for this very specific innovative initiative that my company has, let's talk. So that's basic competency people search. Now let's look at it on a more macro level, selecting one of the offerings that we liked. Looking at Megatronics of Nutribell, being able to select several people to contact. In this display, I can see on the left a totality of all the competencies that it would take to make this product. And do I have all the right partnerships and people assigned to be able to make this happen? And I'm gonna hit the contact people button. This will generate a message, an email that's contextual around Megatronics to reach out to all those folks. An email has been sent and now I see on the globe pending status for all the various folks that I would like to connect with via email. I've got a new email in my inbox. And now I'm getting notifications that people are joining the Akio platform based on the emails that I've sent out. You can see in the upper right, there's an email icon. I'm getting messages there, I'm getting notifications. People are now starting to come into the platform as a result of me reaching out very strategically around this offering. And now product is 100% ready to be worked on because you've filled up all of the competencies with the people that you need. Build it. And lastly, we have a status view that you can tab over to get a clear snapshot of where you're at in communication with people. 
So from scouting trends to understanding your fields of play to seeing what offerings you want to do and then looking for the people to make it, this is the flow that we're looking at on the Akayo platform. Thank you. What, what do you think, Adi? What do you think? Well, quite impressive. And, and we already have a question uh, on the chat that uh, I think addresses some of um, the issues of, okay, we have this great platform, but kind of what else? So let me start with a question uh, from uh, Brad and, and let me read it over uh, for the benefit of the group. So Hitendra, with all the capability that, uh, that we have in AI, uh, what to do about personalities. I mean, it's about really the human aspect of it. Uh, and he explains Boeing and Tesla, Elon Musk just lost Ross money yesterday because of personality seem to have more problem with the personalities than competencies. Does the platform have a way to filter poor teammates and not just credentials? That's so great. it's about the human touch. So, so we recognize that very early in the matchmaking component of the software of the AI that people need to like each other. So what we did do, uh, Adi, is we interviewed probably about 50 different people who do deals. So people who do sales, how do they make a sales happen? People who do uh, partnerships, we interviewed them, what do they do? We interviewed people who do um, collaborations and all this stuff. And what we found in all of them was there was a routine a routine where first you introduce yourself in a way that was not invasive. Then there was an approach in there saying, be patient, have a second meeting, the first meeting to a second meeting. But to be persistent, the persistence was necessary. To talk about win-win, to get into the other person's shoes. And so all these basic things that we already know, we are putting that into the AI engine of how the nudges have to happen. Mm -hmm. And each nudge gets better than the last nudge because we learn from nudges that miss and then nudges that work. And so we begin to kind of prefer some nudges over uh, other nudges. So we use the behavioral economics to drive progress forward, which is the same thing that they're using in matchmaking for Tinder and other types of technologies. And so it's the same technology. We need to match. We need to like each other. We need to have trust. And, and so our algorithms are doing that in terms of flagging people. And it will also have additional tools for people to assess themselves and even improve themselves as a result of it. It'll give feedback to each individual saying, why am I missing? Why am I hitting? What did I say wrong or right? But AI will guide through. A it'll be a colleague next to you through all the process so that you don't need a wise owl like you, Adi, who's a leader of innovation management. I believe we can take you now and digitize you as a colleague for these people through every any meeting. Okay. And... Another question that came from the chat from Victor, uh, it's really about the timing, when to apply AI. So when a company is developing its strategic innovation plan, when is the appropriate time to leverage an AI ecosystem? Would this timing change if the company is either a pathfinder, a fast follower, or just an imitator? What, what we are finding, uh, Adi, is it doesn't matter who we are talking to. Everybody says, I want it. I want this thing. So let me provide personas. A CEO wants to have a story today about AI. If he can even say he's got an AI-enabled innovation management system, it, it, it makes him look at least better prepared than his competitor. So they need a story to say that, but that's not the reason why they should use the platform. The reason they should use the platform is for the first time, I don't need a bigger team. What I need is a digital colleague who can do market research and a digital colleague who can analyze competitor research and a digital colleague who can do all this and put it together in simple answers quickly. So to, in the past, we needed teams which are human beings. Because there's AI in the platform, it finds the trends for you. The trends tells you where your company might interact with in the future. And the trends then tells you what kind of products should be considered. So AI can rapidly provide strategies of where to play in the future for senior executives. So it's not waiting for AI. Mm -hmm. It's AI is being in, is used today for developing the strategies. Doesn't mean it's perfect. It does require human interactions and bionic, human and machine together. But today, 
what McKinsey takes six months to do, this thing should be able to give you solutions in maybe less than one month. But you still need to put human smartness all around it to make sure it makes sense. And actually building on that, there was a question uh, from uh, Ron Jonash um, about, about teams and teaming. So how do we rapidly build the deep trust and respect in these areas across diverse individuals. After all, Ohio is, uh, Akayo, excuse me, is making connection between you know, a diverse group of individuals uh, that need to build a really high performance innovation team. So I, I think this is going to move increasingly to winner takes it all. So those who are already good at collaborating will collaborate better and faster, quicker and quicker. And those who kind of struggle because of personalities or that could command control type of issues are going to struggle anyway. So we're going to see that those are successful will get successful in the past. But I, I want to basically say that you'll get feedback on what you're doing right and wrong. So you, you'll get feedback on how to be a better team player and a partner through the platforms, saying this is what you did right or wrong. This, the learning mechanisms in AI, which tells you immediately what you're doing right or wrong, right? But I want to I want to go, I want to just imagine a story which is even further crazier than you can imagine. Today, I probably need a team of four or five people to do a project, somebody from marketing, somebody from finance, somebody from some other areas, technology and all that. Microsoft is working with Copilot to say that you don't need those five people anymore. I can give you a marketing Copilot and a finance Copilot and a technology co-pilot, and this is your team, and they can talk to each other. Five heads will show up in your team on your Zoom call, which are not real people, who simulate the behavior of a marketing person and simulate the behavior of a technology person, and they work better with you, with your crappy personality. And therefore, they can interact with you better because these are machines who will learn to work with your style versus working where you have to change your style. Humans hate changing their styles. So I do see a world where all of us will have the best people working because they like us. They want to work with us. And our technology platforms will do these things. Now, I do agree with what Ron is saying that ultimately the right partnership will require likability, trust, right? And there is training that has to be done, but I believe that the next generation will learn quickly how to do that and they'll fake it digitally on how to do that. And actually, it's, it's really interesting. You brought an interesting point about the feedback mechanism that drives, call it an appropriate or productive behavior. And we see it in other markets. I mean, think of completely different markets. Think about Uber and the fact that I, as a passenger, receive ranking by the driver. I also rank the driver and how it changes the dynamics uh, between the driver and a passenger and encourages both to behave collaboratively and respectfully. Uh, so there's a very interesting analogies here uh, with, um, uh, with kind of other social uh, and economic platform. Uh, let me turn to another question uh, that came from the chat. And that one is really interesting because it really touches on the difference between a public or a government organization and a commercial organization. Uh, and the question uh, from Nazish Ali is, what is the main issue where organizations is still not able to adapt this to this uh, fast change, especially service-oriented and public or government organization? You talked a lot about speed, but obviously in government, public organization, that, that that's a challenge. Look, think, think of it like this. A company like NVIDIA, which nobody had even talked about was on their radar, moves from a $20 billion company to a $300 billion valuation in less than two years, right? That's, that's speed, right? And therefore, first, anybody can go faster because of this new world we live in. But if you don't move, you do get left behind quickly, right? You get left behind very quickly, and therefore the gap gets bigger and bigger and faster and faster. So there's a vicious cycle for those who start slow, and there's a virtuous cycle for those who start fast. So the guidance on this for everybody is, um, you can play a fast follower role, but I am increasingly a believer of a book that was written in the 90s called The Rule of Three. And The Rule of Three was basically in every industry, there would be three companies who would lead the world. 
in telecom, it will be three companies. There will be three telephone companies. There will be three car companies. There will be three uh, uh, advertising companies. There will be three food companies. And those guys are going to search forward where they position in the traditional way, differentiation, scale, or, 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 or accessibility or something. But everybody else is going to just get further and further behind. This is, we are running a 100-meter race exactly as the race we saw in the Olympics. And the change and the difference between first, second, and third is in the thousands of seconds, right? We saw that in, in swimming, in, butter, in, the, in, the, in the breaststroke uh, the race that we just saw recently. Same thing, thousands of seconds. We don't have a choice. If you go slow, you will be outsourcing services to other people to provide you the service. If you go fast, you'll be the provider of services. That's my hypothesis. Not Another question is really about uh, the future of work. I mean, lots of discussion around AI and how it impacts, you know, different professions, different skills. Uh, it will replace some of the human uh, human resources. It may augment others. When when I look at Akayo. Uh, it really addresses the very top of the organization. Those are you know, big strategic decisions. So when I look at this platform, the question is, what will be the role of senior management in the future of innovative, collaborative platforms such as Akaya? So the first one is they cannot be the N-O of innovation. They have to be the yes of innovation, number one because the world is changing and the world is changing very fast. So they need to be very, very adaptive and flexible and, 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 and embracing. The problem is the guys from the 90s are still struggling to move from Excel to Google Sheets. The guys are still trying to figure out PowerPoint into the new way of doing presentations, right? They are struggling and they are the wrong people in power unless they are flexible and they're willing to change. Right? The leadership has to embrace the fact that AI is coming and so is robotics and so is CRISPR and so on. It's going to come. It's also, also going to recognize that your workforce will decrease because half the stuff that you are asking people to do can be automated and generated. Right? There is still a certain percentage of decision making that has to be done and some creativity that is still not trusted to a system. But trust me on this point. If AI was asked to write the newspaper for Crimson at Harvard Business, at, at Harvard University, and you give it just the titles, and you take that newspaper and you give it to a professor, a journalist professor to grade it, and you ask the students to write it. Two newspapers, same headlines, one written by students, by one by AI. The, the AI one will get a B minus. The students might get a B plus. But guess what grade the AI will get next semester? And the semester afterwards. And what do you think the students will get for the next 50 years? The same damn grade. Our brains cannot evolve as fast as AI. And AI, this is called a disruptive technology. It's improving technology at a faster rate than human beings can evolve. And therefore, we will be disrupted. So I would tell HR, I would talk all CEOs to rethink their staffing models, rethink where AI needs to be used because your competitor will use it. And at the same time, make sure where powerful decisions have to be made. There are checks and balances in play to make sure that the output is worthy of being world-class and competitive. Yeah. And I think it also has very significant implications on skill development within organizations. So which skills do you need or want to develop? given the fact that AI is now augmenting and, and replacing some of the basic skills uh, that exist. I mean, there's a lot of discussion about like basic research in law firm or consulting firms where, you know, that was the core skill of an analyst and it's less and less required given that, that AI is, is, is coming. And, and I think the same again apply at a very senior management level as it comes to uh, setting strategy and, and driving strategy execution. Uh, 
couple of questions uh, uh, that came uh, uh, through the chat. Uh, another question from Ron. How do we get our organizations to be leaders and suspend disbelief and skepticism to move fast enough uh, to save the day and learn faster than others by doing? Uh, so that's really bit how do we encourage organization to, to speed up uh, and, for example, adapt, and this is kind of my addition, adapt platforms such as Akaya. I think it begins, first of all, with the recognition that AI can be a great growth engine and for, 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 for technology and AI can be a great growth engine for every company, number one. Just recognize that. And even if you're in insurance or you're in cement or you're in traditional industries, there is a place for AI in your processes, in your customer service, in your new product services, along with the services to be able to do that and in your business models. So just as we were talking about how business model innovation was the big breakthrough of the 90s and 2000s, what we announced, and then we said, oh, digital can come in there and work on, on, on our company processes. This is not about making things better, faster and faster and more efficient. This is about creating better customer service, creating new products, creating new business models that we haven't imagined. And in there, every one of us can be personalized and customized. Every one of us can feel that this company is actually talking about me. In the same way Netflix recommends movies to you, in the same way that Amazon will send you a box with stuff inside there that you didn't even order. And when you open the box, it's exactly what you wanted. This is where we are going, where the thinking is being outsourced to machines, to a large extent for, for consumers. But Amazon can't outsource the thinking completely. There's a portion of it which has to be about decisions. And wherever decisions are going to be made, that's where I encourage all of you guys to stay. That's where the jobs of the future are, where decisions have to be made. And you can't trust your AI systems to make those decisions. Surgery. Do you want somebody to slice a piece of your spine with AI or a doctor? Somewhere over there, you might say, I want a human. Where are the human decisions that you really trust and will never outsource? But over time, they too are going to be outsourced. It's just a matter of time. One additional question or, or an area I want you to, to reflect on, and that's the very macro economic level if I look at a platform such as Akaya, which really allows any organization to identify partners and capabilities around the world, uh, what's your view on the impact that it may have on, I call it emerging economies or areas that perhaps, or regions or organization in the past did not have the visibility or have not been recognized uh, for specific skills and capabilities. I mean, that has a potential to really make a significant change in kind of the balance of power and ability of small hubs to scale quickly. Yeah, I, I, I really believe you don't need to be big anymore. That's what Akayo is talking about. You can be very small and throw a shadow across the planet. And we were using networks before as a way to do that. And Jimmy, as an organization, does exactly that, and GCIO is trying to do that. They throw a shadow with, with a network. But now we have a digital network that's real, and that can connect people, and you can find people, so we don't have to say, Adi, do you know that person or this person? Can you call them? Now we can actually find them, and we can bypass you to a large extent. We don't even need you anymore to a large extent, except to mention, hey, I, I, you know Adi, and I know Adi, let's talk. Right, so those all those things, which is the power of relationships, historical, are being shifted to. But having said that, it is in a better place because now we democratize innovation for those who want to innovate, and not only those who have relationships and networks. We have made the networks democratized. Great. Last question, just in terms of the timeline of deployment of Akayo, if you can just kind of update the group a little bit on the work uh, that's currently been doing, the progress and kind of key key milestones that are upcoming. Of course. We have a consortium of some amazing companies working with us as pilots and uh, prototypes and betas. 
and we continue to look for other Fortune 500 size companies or big universities to collaborate with to do these things as part of the the the, the betas. Um, they are already seeing benefits of it in terms of how powerful is changing the organizational thinking, look outside versus inside type thinking, cultural changes. We are we have been raising money and we have had a really good uh, raise in the last year and we're going to start our next raise where which starts in, in about two months and that's going to be at a at a much higher valuation so that's moving and that cash is coming in to put in together and I will let you know there are two expenses that people don't understand about AI. Number one, every single digital engineer has become an AI engineer and somehow double the salary. But just by saying that, I'm an AI LLM model expert. So expensive engineers, but the technology platforms, the biggest cost are the computers which do the calculations. And a lot of people don't appreciate that we are doing vector math and vector calculation, which requires calculations which are exponential to the amount of calculations we did in the past. And therefore, the amount of energy we're going to be using in the future to do AI is going to be the equivalent of countries. The same argument they use about blockchain and crypto currency about how much calculations are being done. The calculations are going to be tremendous. So we're raising money for computers and computational power. We are starting to stay away from the cloud at this moment and doing our own stuff. And, and that's the race. But we are looking at uh, launching uh, uh, products in November for customers to start using, but we are piloting it with a set of small clients. Hi, Ron. How are you? Far bigger, bolder, faster, cheaper. You've been saying that for years. Yes. Now we are going to make it real. Bigger, bolder, better, cheaper, faster. Yeah. Okay. But I think the main thing is uh, just suspending disbelief and doing it. Learn by doing it. Do it right now. The people who learn the fastest and spread the learning the fastest in their organization are going to emerge rapidly as leaders and attract everybody to kind of their capability to build this platform. We To, to the question, um, Adi's question and Ron's, Jimmy has suspended disbelief and said we'd like to roll this thing out in Jimmy and to its 13,000 members. And so it will go through Jimmy and Jimmy will be the backbone for people to sign in. And now people can ask questions. I want to make a bicycle. Who can help me make a bicycle uh, you know, of the future? Uh, and so we can, we'll be able to do that in Jimmy for sure. So Jimmy is the pilot partner. And then we'll of course look at the GCIO partners. I hope they're listening right now. And Ayala and La Salle and, and Open Innovation will also consider becoming pilot place for us to test things out. But we are looking for Three types of things, just to be clear. We are looking for investors. And if you're interested, talk to us. Because the trajectory we are on, the valuations are doubling very quickly. So earlier is better, of course, riskier. Second was we are looking for consortium partners who are flexible and collaborative in working small pilots. And the third one, of course, is sign up now as a customer so that you can get maybe early pricing for the platform and start using it. We just about uh, uh, hit the top of the hour. So Hidendo, I just would like to give you maybe 30 seconds to, you know, what is the key message that you want the group to take away from today's uh, today's session uh, and the discussion about AI powered uh, ecosystems? Thank you. Um, first, I just want to say, look, my mentor is Ron Jonash over there sitting over there and he, was the one who kind of always mentioned about bigger, bolder, faster, cheaper ecosystems. And he was talking about this in the 90s and 2000s. And I, I bought into the idea of it's, 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 it, that's, that's how you do it. I really bought into that idea. And try and try again, we tried to make it happen, but it was very hard to do it because the world was not digitally connected. And AI wasn't there to kind of nudge things forward. So we tried and we failed. We tried and we failed to make this ecosystem work. The timing is now. And what comes out of this is the, the point. Every person can imagine big things to work on, the biggest things to work on, including putting a man on the moon. And if you can think that big, then you ask, how, how can I make it real? And when John F. Kennedy says that, how can I make that real? He says, we will use the resources and competencies of the world to assemble rockets, assemble spacesuits to make that happen. And when you believe 
on a big idea and the ability to find those competencies from anywhere on the planet. Now the story is imagined and it might just become real from Walt Disney is a reality. That's the yeah, that's what we wanted, Akayo. And I hope that each one of you will get excited by it and you'll be able to do something bigger and bolder that you've never imagined that you could do before. Thank you. Thank you, Ishandra. Uh, Adi, you're on mute. Am I? Okay, you're fine. Okay. So thank you, Itendra, and thank you to over 100 participants who join us uh, from around the world. Uh, just getting a peek at the future, or actually it's the present of innovation and how AI is, is really driving and changing the world of innovation management. Uh, so thank you for your participation and we'll see you all in our next session, uh, GCIO session in a month's time. So thank you everyone.